Today has been all about stories and promises. If you kind of listen to the stories that we shared about people reaching out to God and God's faithfulness to us. And we started the morning off with having some children here and reading some promises over their life. You know, I actually have a book of all the promises that I've prayed over children, and some of them are getting scarily old. <laughs> and what's amazing, and I often get this book out and look over these promises and think, Lord, you are so true to your word that some of these things that we've spoken out in belief and in faith and in prayer, that I, we're seeing the fruit of that. Um, yeah, it's just wonderful. And so today's been about an unfolding story. And if you're new here today or this is your first time, you're so welcome. But you've come and joined us at a time where we are, as a community, we are on a journey. And so we started this year out with a series called Go Again, where we believe God was calling us back to a place to refresh us, to remind us, to recall to us a promise. And then once we got to this place, he then said, now go, go again. And we've been reading the story where God's people got, went from a place of captivity and slavery. They then wandered around the desert for some time, and then they crossed a river into what God said was their promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And so not so long ago, we crossed almost a, like a, a fake river just here, and we picked up pebbles, and we crossed, because we're not doing this on our own, we're doing this as a community. Just as the people of God moved as a community into their promised land, so were we moving as a community into the fullness of what God's promised us. If you haven't listened to all the messages Ike, that has understanding, and so it's important that you're, we're all on the same page because we're moving together. But Dave spoke about, he said, he said well, I've got to be honest, he said it like, is it like, oh, oh, nobody would think this, and I'm thinking, I think that all the time. He was talking about the promises of God, and he was saying that sometimes, and he kind of said it like a joke, Dave, you did, said it like, you know, we expect promises to arrive in the parcel, labeled, and then we'll just unpack and, and magically blow into our life. I'm like, yes, I do want the God, the promises of God. to. I love parcels. Who doesn't love getting posts? Come on. You know, to Siobhan, from your heavenly father, poof, promise unfolds in your life. I'm like, yeah, can I have a parcel like that every day? But Dave spoke a little bit about process, and that's really where my message is camped, because the power and the presence of God is with us, and he has given us a promise, but there is a process. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't move in the miraculous and the sudden, but in my lifetime with my walk with God, they've been a handful, but the majority of my walk has been a little bit of process, a little bit of promise unfolding, a little bit of process, a little bit of promise unfolding. Dave, a few, Ben a few weeks ago spoke about God of the get-to is also the God of the go-through. And we need to go through some stuff. And that's a process right there. Now, sometimes that can be hurtful. Sometimes based on the process and what we need to deal with, we might not want to do it. I don't know if you like process or not. I've got to be honest, I'm like a not girl, like a parcel, please. I have a friend called Joy and she's an accountant by, prof by profession, and she eats process for leadership strength because not only does she know the things she's leading well and robust with a dynamic to it because she's got to develop a process, but the power to her leadership is that then she's able to empower and equip others to do the same because she's dealt with something to such a degree that she now has a process for it. So when someone says, how do you do it? She goes, hold on, I know the process for this and she can empower and equip, there lies the multiplication factor. And so if you want your leadership to go to a different level, not only if you think, oh, Sean, who am I leading? Lead yourself. If you want your self-leadership to go to another level, start to understand process. And so I was like, I kind of felt, Lord, I'm going to talk about process. He said, like, yeah, that's why you're going to do it. <laughs> because some of us want to avoid process. But I loved when I was speaking to my husband about this. He said, Siobhan, you can't subcontract process out. I was like, oh, really? You, you Really, you can't? He's like, no, you can't. You can't have a surrogate for your process. As 
much as you would love to, the thing, the reason you can't is because you're not going to learn. You're not going to grow. And then you're not going to be able to teach others. Here is the essence of discipleship. If I don't learn and I don't grow and I can't teach others, I can't be a disciple who's making a disciple. A disciple is literally someone who follows Jesus. And so if I want to follow Jesus and help others to follow Jesus, I've got to embrace the process. Oh, that's the good news. <laughs> but you know what? When you read scripture, I want to show you how engaging with process is powerful because it's going to unlock your promise. I'm going to get a scripture up on screen. It's Matthew 7, uh, verse 7 to 8. And I want you to hear process and then see promise. So keep on asking process. You have to have the process of asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking. Seeking is the process, and you will find. Keep on knocking. Knocking is the process, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, that's the process, step one process, ask, receives. That's the promise. Everyone who seeks, process, finds. That's the promise. Everyone who knocks, that's the process. The door will be opened. That's the promise. This is what the walk with God looks like. It looks like me being obedient, me taking steps that engage with the process, and God fulfilling his promise. And it's little bit, I love this verse because it actually shows you that this is a continual action. This isn't a one-time deal. Well, I knocked. This is an unfolding promise. This is a growing relationship that engage with the process and God fulfilling his promise. And it's little bit, I love this verse because it actually shows you that this is a continual action. This isn't a one-time deal. Well, I knocked. This is an unfolding promise. This is a growing relationship. So it requires a walk. That's a step, by the way. A walk, a journey with God requires process, promise, process, promise. That's what a journey looks like. It might start with one step, but it's followed with multiple steps. And I love how this verse kind of unpacks that. Honestly, if you look at scripture, it's littered with process and promise. Psalm 37, 4, it says, take delight in the Lord. That's the, that's the process, taking delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. That's the promise. You keep going. I mean, honestly, it says if you lack wisdom, ask. That's the process. Let's ask for wisdom, and he's going to give it to you liberally. James 4, 8, I love it. It says, draw near to God. That's the process. Draw near to God, and the promise is I will draw near to you. Why should we engage with process? Because it unlocks the promise. Because it unlocks the promise. So the question is, do you want the promises of God to unfold before you? It's going to require a walk. Um, I'm going to share us a video now. And so, listen, I'm married to an insurance broker. Lord help me, it's an insurance video. <laughs> I've been, I know, I've been married too long. Oh, help me. But look past the fact that it's an insurance video and just fix his eyes on the screen. Unfortunately, not everything is what it looks like. But if something does happen, then you and your car are well insured at Promo Bendham Insurance. <laughs> I actually don't know who that insurance company is, so don't like go and seek them out. I don't know if they're any good or not. But hello, this is actually. I mean, I've been watching all kinds of videos now based on this, but this is called Forced Perspective. And it, it basically uses, it plays on the fact that an object is, is near and another object is far. My husband wanted me to play this. Have you seen Father Ted? And he goes, near, far away. Anyway, I was like, no, I'm not playing that. But it plays on the stuff that, that, that when objects are near and objects are far away, but the illusion lies in that the gap is not perceived. And when you don't see the gap, you have a forced perspective. You basically see something that isn't how it is. 
things that are small actually appear large. If you perceive the gap, that's just not going to happen in your lifetime. You know, I mean, we once went on a holiday and we went to the Leaning Tower of Pisa and there we were, you know, convincing everybody. We were holding the tower up. You know, that's not happening. But if you do it in such a way that the gap isn't perceived, you can force a perspective. We're about to go from one postcode to another. We want to go move into the fullness of God's promise. And that's going to require a change of address. That's going to require a change of postcode. So for some of you, you might feel right now that you have a postcode of hopelessness and you want to move to a postcode of hope. There is going to be required a gap between where you are and where you're going that you're going to have to navigate. It's dangerous when you don't perceive the gap that needs to be navigated because it gives you a false perception but what I love about these films is as soon as you move, the illusion's broken. It doesn't require a lot of movement to actually break the illusion. And so I actually want to give you a tool because we're talking about process, and I don't think as people we're naturally very good at process, and so I want to give you a tool. I want to give you a method of when, okay, I'm here and I want to be there, I want to give you a method that is going to help you navigate and close that gap. Because gaps that are not perceived, not only will they distort your vision, but they can be harmful. A friend of mine is overseas, and he's walking along his, you know, the road, and he doesn't perceive a hole, a manhole, in the road, and he falls in it, and he hurts his leg. Now he's healing, he's fine. But the thing is, there was nothing wrong with the road, and there was nothing wrong with where he should be, but the thing is, he didn't perceive the gap. He don't get hurt because you're trying to navigate somewhere that you haven't been before. The Lord says, don't you see it? I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? We need to perceive the way ahead and so that we can close the gap. I can't believe I'm doing this message. The Lord has a sense of humor. I mean, we're talking about process. And I felt, it's funny because the, the title of my message is Mind the Gap. And I started working here at the edge about seven years ago now, and my very first staff meeting, I felt that God was speaking to me about mind the gap. And I was just trying to preserve my dignity. I was like, oh my goodness. I was sitting here, and Dave says, um, does anybody have something to share? I'm like, don't say anything stupid. This is your first staff meeting. You want to like, you know, let's just start as a meeting to go on. Before I knew it, something popped up my mouth. Not only is something popping up my mouth, but I'm at the board drawing something. I'm like, dear Lord, Siobhan, sit down. And I write these words, mind the gap. And... I don't really know what they mean, to be honest. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing Mind the Gap on the radio. And, you know, I'm hearing it at train stations. And I'm like, what does this mean? And to be honest, I wrestle with it for three months and don't really get anywhere with it and shelve it until the beginning of this year where I'm sitting across with a woman who's encouraging me in my leadership. And she says, Siobhan, you need to bring language to the gap. You need to start to communicate the gap. And I was like, oh my goodness, I think I remember, like, I don't know, I think I remember something about Mind the Gap. And as I started to come home, all these thoughts started to really race to me about how do we navigate the gap. And I believe what I'm about to share with you is really a reflection of what I've learned over the last seven years of working with people and seeing where people get stuck, seeing where people get lost, and seeing where people go round and round in circles. And so I got really excited, really giddy around the office, like, oh my goodness, I mean, I've been testing it. Every time I had coffee with somebody, I'm like, test this tool. I think it's a processing tool that's going to help you navigate and move closer to where you want to go. So I keep asking people, like, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? This is the tool. I think this is tested. Tell me if it doesn't work. And every time I've used it, people are like, this is like, a I'm like, I know. Come on, this is fantastic. So I want to give you a tool. Um, because ultimately, the participation, the participation in the promise is going to lead you to the possession. And so I want you to, if there was one thing you were going to remember today, we're going to have a slide come up now, and I want you to remember this. Either write it down, take a photograph of it, but participation in the process unfolds the possession of the promise. So why am I giving you this tool? 
because participation in the process unfolds the person. I'm going to have a slide come up now, and I want you to remember this. Either write it down, take a photograph of this, but participation in the process unfolds the possession of the promise. So why am I giving you this tool? Because participation in the process unfolds the possession of the promise. I mean, I don't know if you can say that really quickly. I was practicing in the car with how quick I could say that. Participation in the promise unfolds the possession of the promise. Like, it's like alliteration. There you go. But remember, why are we doing this tool? Why are we looking at it? Because participation in the process is key to you possessing the unfolding promise in your life. And so this is why I want to give you this tool today. And this tool really looks at three areas. It looks at relationship, it looks at information, and it looks at experience. This will really work with pretty much anything. So my, my son, who is currently studying his A-levels, who wants to be an engineer, but he wants to engineer things, he basically wants to design things, he wants to work at the cutting edge of innovative kind of development, but he doesn't know how to get from the fact that he's currently studying his A-levels to working for a company that's designing cutting-edge things and being a part of that innovativeness. He, so I'm like, how do, we, how do we close the gap? So we started with relationships. Do you have any relationship? He's like, no, I'm doing my A-levels, mom, don't you know? I'm like, well, I don't know anybody who's kind of leading these kind of companies. And so he started emailing all the companies that he wanted to potentially work for. Then they started to email him back and giving him information about if you wanted to work for us, this is what we would be looking for. Now, based on the information that he's got, he's now looking for universities that have industry experience because that's the experience that these companies are looking for. Can you see how the gap's closed? We've gone from, we've gone from no relationship to reaching out to then getting some information back that helps us with the right experience to bring the gap closer of where he ultimately wants to go. So I want you to do a bit of a gap analysis with me, and I want you to think about what in your life, and the more specific you are, the closer you're going to be able to narrow that gap. What in your life do you want to change postcode about? What in your life do you actually want to bridge the gap with? And I'm going to show you how this tool, this tool of processing, really works. So I'm just going to give you a moment, because in processing, you have to take a, you have to take a minute. You have to have a time of reflection. And so right now, either on your phone or if you have a book or whatever, where are you currently and where do you want to go? Has God given you a promise that you want to see unfold? So I want you to take a minute and think very specifically because as I journey this, I want you to start to put yourself in the picture. I want you to start to actually put what I'm saying into context of your own life. So what is it? I see phones going out, books going, fantastic. What is it that you want to draw closer to? What is it that you want to navigate towards? So I'm going to show you a little bit about how each component works together. You know, in business, they do gap analysis all the time. If they do a tender and they want to meet a certain standard, what they do is they do analysis of where are we currently, what's the standard we, we need to meet, and through a series of questions, they ascertain how they need to adapt in order to meet the standard. So businesses do gap analysis all the time, and it brings them to a point where they actually achieve what they want to achieve. Now, that's great for business, but don't you want to achieve? Don't you want to have victory in your life? Don't you want to have where we're going and how we can bridge it? So first of all, I want to look at relationships. This is the first step to bridging the gap. I want to ask yourself, with relationships, remember, gap analysis revolves around a series of questions. Am I lost? If you feel lost right now, I would direct you to look at the gap in relationship in your life. Because am I lost? Jesus says in John 14, 6, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. So if you're feeling lost, your first thing is to come to a relationship with Jesus because he's the way. And it's going to give you not only a gift of love, but it's going to give you a gift of promise. Some of you are like, I hear all this talk this morning about promise. I don't know what the promise is for my life. It starts with coming to Jesus who says he's the way and receiving a promise from him. And so if you feel lost and you think, Siobhan, I know Jesus, but I still feel lost, look at the relationships in your life. 
Are they helping you draw you nearer to the thing you're trying to navigate to? Is there a gap in relationships? You know, sometimes as adults, it's harder to make friends. Let's just be honest, because when you're a child, you just don't care, and you're like, can I have some of your lunch? <laughs> you're just like sharing, and it's great. But when you get an adult, you're a little bit more self-conscious, and you don't kind of want to push yourself out there. So some of you, you're going to have to take a step in the unknown and make a connection and start building relationships. We have so many vehicles here at TCC that you can do that. You can join a community group. If you don't serve a volunteer, I encourage you to do that because that's going to help you build relationships. A key important part of relationships is not only that we take, but we give. It's where we become known. It's where we're valued. It's where we find our sense of belonging. And so if you don't feel like you belong, if you feel like you're drifting, if you feel like you're lost, Look at the gap of relationship and start to bridge it by taking steps. Is this okay? Is that helpful? So the second point is, if you kind of get to a point in relationship, and you know, I'm solid, I've got good relationships, healthy relationships, they're helping me go towards what I feel like I need to journey towards, I'd ask you to look at information. Because... There's a guy, he's a US, he used to be a US, U.S. Secretary of State in 2002, um, Donald Rumfield, I think his name is, and he said this whole statement about the unknown unknowns. And he was saying that actually very often the problems that we find are in the unknown unknowns. We all know what we know, and some of us know what we don't know, but really the problem lies in what we are unaware that we do not know, the unknown unknowns. And so sometimes you can feel, in the point of information, you can feel stuck. I don't know why I can't move forward. I've got good relationships. I don't feel lost, but I feel a little stuck. I would encourage you to start to ask questions about where is my blind spot? What don't I know that I don't know? And this really, that's why you have to look at relationships first, because you go to a point where you have a strong relationship with somebody and you say to them, look, not from a spirit of control, but from a spirit of accountability, can you help me check my blind spot? Could you let me know, is there something I'm unaware of? I have a friend who we have this kind of relationship with each other and we've given each other permission to relationships is where you start because you need good relationships in order to check the information that you have is what you think. Because don't forget, a gap will distort your perspective. So you might not be seeing things as they are. We all need someone that we can be accountable to say, would you show me the truth here? Because Jesus said not only was he the way, but he was the truth. And so we need to come into a point like, Jesus, what have I, what don't I know? What have I taken for granted? But actually, it's a false perspective. There's a gap here that I need to bridge. And so for some of you, that might need to be, you need to do a blind spot test. But lastly, if you get to a point and you think, actually, I've got great relationships. I feel like I'm growing in my information and my understanding and the truth, but I don't feel lost and I don't feel stuck, but I feel like I'm reeling. I feel like I'm going round and round in circles. I would encourage you to, to look at experience because most of our belief systems are shaped by our experience. And so I think I'm funny because I'll tell a joke and people laugh. If my experience is every time I crack a joke, nobody laughs, I'm not going to think I'm funny. So this is where our experience shapes what we think. So my experience is every time I tell a joke, somebody laughs, I now hold the belief system that I've got a good sense of humor. But if you feel like you're going round and round in circles and you can't seem to bridge the gap, I would encourage you to look at experience because not all our experience is good. And some of our experience actually gives us a false belief system. Things that we aren't true about ourselves, but based on our past experience, we're drawing from negative experience that actually brings about a negative belief system that has you going round and round in circles. So how do we break that? Well, Jesus said, I am the way, belief system. 
things that we aren't true about ourselves are based on our past experience. We're drawing from negative experience that actually brings about a negative belief system that has you going round and round in circles. So how do we break that? Well, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we start to experience the life of Jesus when we follow with relationships, when we start to engage with his truth, our life starts to change. And it starts to give us an idea that maybe we need a new experience. So for me personally, I am trying to love the gym. Honestly, I really am. So I've kind of got to the point of relationships, and I've got a gym buddy now who meets with me on the mornings that we go, and that's great. I've researched all the gyms and how do you make healthy habits and I've read books and I feel like I've got good information on it. But really, I'm kind of stuck going around in circles because my experience tells me you're going to hate it. You're going to be so uncomfortable. You're not going to like the atmosphere. You're, gonna su- you're not going to succeed. But I want to break that mindset because I actually believe that's a place of growth. That's a place of health for me. And so I have to change my experience. And so I'm doing classes I wouldn't know if I've done before. I've never done Pilates because I kind of thought, what are they doing? That they don't seem to be doing an awful lot. They're just lying on a mat. Breathe in, breathe out. Ooh. And I'm like, whatever muscle they're using, I don't have it because they're like, oh, when's it going to be finished? I'm like, just fine, you know. But I thought, okay, Siobhan, because my experience as a gym is I should hate it. And I'd love to lie on the mat for about half an hour and then go home and think I've been to the gym. That's fantastic. So I did my first Pilates class. I had a hoot. I realized I'm not bendy. And then I realized the muscles I didn't know I had hurt about three days later. I mean, I'm trying to change my experience. For some of you who are going round and round in circles, and it might not be a bad circle. I don't want to make this out to be like, you know, doom and gloom. It might be a great circle. But our walk with God, because we're walking with the God who created the heavens and the earth, and he takes us from okay to good, from good to better, from better to great. If you're walking with the king of kings, your journey is going to take you from glory to glory. And so we're not about just being okay. We're not just being about being good. You know what? Where we are is good. But the fullness of God's promise is taking us to great. And so we might need to actually bridge the gap of our experience. And so I don't know where your gap lies, but I'm asking you to review of where you are and where you're going. And where lies your gap? Is your gap in relationships? Do you need a way? Is your gap in information? Do you need to know the truth? And is your gap in experience? Do you need to know and experience the fullness of God? I don't know where your gap is, but I pray that together we'll start to engage with process, participate in it, so that we can see the promises of God unfold. That's the why. You know, when you get tired of process, remind yourself why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I wanted to see the fullness of God's promise. I'm doing this because I want to experience life and life to the full. That's why I'm doing it. I'm just going to ask Emmanuel, could you just join me on stage? But we're going to come into time now and finish. But what I learned a few years back is I used to look at these Christians who've been Christians for years, and I realized that spiritual maturity, being a mature Christian, being a mature disciple, a mature follower of Jesus, is less about the number of years you follow Jesus and more about the gap between God speaking and you responding. That means you can mature very quickly, but you can also lose your maturity. When last did you ask God, Lord, what are you saying to me? And then how quickly did it take you to respond and ask yourself, what am I going to do about it? And so I'm asking us as 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 a family to look and ask God, Lord, would you help mature me? Would you help narrow the gap of you speaking and me listening. We're going to, I'm just going to ask you to stand. We're going to pray now. But I'm just so conscious that for some of you, your first step is coming into relationship with Jesus. You know, I didn't start dating my husband on the first date knowing I would marry him. I first started a relationship with him and then came the information. 
I feel sometimes we are reluctant to start a relationship with Jesus because we think, I don't know everything. I don't know all the facts. But actually, I didn't decide I was going to marry my husband on the first day I met him. I actually started a relationship with him, and gradually, I started to know the truth about him. And as I started to know the truth about him, our relationship grew stronger. The truth then had some place to fall. It had a context in which to be engaged. And then my experience told me that the truth I was learning, start a relationship with him. Do you want to take one step? 